So I want to talk to you about the DevRel Swag Store. We have a, a mini example of it here today at the back of the room. I want to talk a bit about what it is, why we built it, how we built it, and most importantly of all, this is the method by which you can collect your swag from the meetup here today. So the DevRel Swag Store is, in essence, a demonstration of Stripe technology. Before joining Stripe, I was at AWS, and I was a developer advocate for Serverless, where my team created an application called Serverless Espresso, which allows you to order a cup of coffee from your mobile phone using serverless technology. And we built that for reInvent, the big customer conference at AWS. And it was such a hit, it enabled developers to use serverless technology and have engaging conversations in a real application that it then became uh, the, the go-to demo for workshops and summits and um, various AWS meetups all over the world for the next two years. So joining Stripe, I was very keen to create the Stripe version of that. What is a demonstration that we can let people use at these big technology events where they can use a Stripe technology and enjoy that and kind of spark ideas as well as generate conversations? So the first time we ran this was at an event called Go to Chicago. Go to run a, lots of technology events all over the world. They do um, Amsterdam, Chicago. They do a couple in the Nordics, and they do lots of things in London as well. So we created this for Go to Chicago, and the idea was to allow people at the expo hall to walk up to our Stripe booth and to not just have a, a chat about anything in general, but to let them try out Stripe technology without them even really realizing that they were using a demo. And we did this by way of this swag store. So we had various products that were from the Stripe swag merchandise store, things like t-shirts and books, stickers, that they could scan a QR code for, which would load a payment link. They would put their payment info into the payment link. It's in a sandbox, so there's no actual money transacting. And they would come away with a confirmation page and a piece of swag, and then we would get to talk to them about all the technology that they just use and how it integrates with Amazon Event Bridge, how we use webhooks, and so forth. And I'm going to cover a little bit about how we built it. So the first thing we had to do was to add some products to our Stripe account. So we did that using Stripe CLI very quickly to add a bunch of interesting books to this Stripe account. Coincidentally, Stripe actually has a whole publishing press, a whole other part of the business that's just about publishing technology books, bringing back books from the past and publishing new technology books as well. It's called Stripe Press. So it's a lovely um, item to be able to give away to people. And they're really high quality books as well. So we decided to use this Stripe Press as our swag store, right? We were going to have a, a mini bookstore. And this is what we have here today. So we added books, we added our products. The next thing we added was payment links. Payment links are the simplest, quickest, easiest way to get going on Stripe. You generate a price ID and a payment link. It's like a landing page where you can then select various payment methods, Apple Pay, Google Pay, credit card. Um, just by selecting a checkbox, your users could then choose their most comfortable payment method, their quickest payment method. You can take the payment, and you're up and running very quickly indeed. The final thing we did is to add some of that product information to a cloud database. So we use DynamoDB. This is an AWS key value serverless database. And then we had to think of a way to map products from our Stripe account to our Amazon DynamoDB table. So in Stripe, we hold very little information about each product. It's literally just the product ID and the image on that product. So we use Stripe CDN to hold and serve that image. Um, and the other thing that we obviously link it to within Stripe is a price ID and a payment link. Then in DynamoDB on the Amazon side, where our application is hosted, we have more information about that product. So we have that unique product ID. That's our mapping ID. And then we're able to hold information about which store this product is in. If we were running this event at another, or this um, DevRel swag store at another meetup at the same time, we need a way to say that we have different products in different stores. So that's this SK, store ID. That's the sort key. So that allows us to have a whole collection of Stripe products in one Stripe account, and then use our um, Amazon DynamoDB database to kind of filter different stores that are available at the same time. What we also hold in DynamoDB is the inventory number, so the number of that product that's currently available. 
And we have to update that as soon as a payment is taken. And that's the next bit that I want to show you how we do. But first, we can give you a live demonstration. If James is available, James, are you going to buy something from our swag store here? Let me just load this up. So we started this evening with six different books. Some people arrived early. There's benefit to that. They got the first pick of which books to take away. So now we just have three different books left. So James here is going to go ahead and choose a book to buy. We generate the QR code just using a normal JavaScript library. This is an application built in Vue.js. It just loads on the browser. We pull in all the different products from our Stripe dashboard. We check that against our DynamoDB table to make sure that they are products available for this store. James has made his purchase. And this is the interesting part, right? Someone else has made a purchase sneakily. Who, who bought the Prince of Persia book just now? Uh, not only. OK, you bought that one. Someone else bought the stuff in attachment. OK, so what you saw there was the front end application reacting to those purchasing events, right? There was a checkout event. That event was sent to our AWS account via a um, Amazon event bridge event bus. OK, so we're registered for those checkout events. They get sent to our AWS account. AWS account then routes that event to a Lambda function. The Lambda function sends a notification onto an open WebSocket connection that this website has with our back end. And it, as part of that notification is the product ID that was just bought. And that's how we're able to make the correct item pulse and make that confetti effect is because we know someone else has just bought another book. Thanks very much. What you'll also notice is this stock number decrements each time. This started as 10 for each of these, and I think this one was 50 at the beginning of the day. Um, and if I go to, this is my DynamoDB table that actually holds the quantity for each book. And if I refresh this, you'll see the quantities are decremented there. That's the new update. There's only three of them available now. So this is how I'm sending this information to my front end by capturing that event in Stripe and then publishing that to my WebSocket connection. And if that's kind of awkward to visualize, then uh, let me show you it in diagram format. I like a good diagram. So this is what we do to hydrate the page with all the different products that are available, right? So the first thing we do is we have our own API in Amazon um, on our Amazon application using API Gateway. That API Gateway API then proxies the call on to Stripe. Oh. Proxies the call on to Stripe, grabs all the products in my Stripe account using the stripe.paymentlinks.list API call, checks that against my DynamoDB database to make sure they're relevant for this event, and then renders that on my front end. The next thing to happen is taking payments, right? So when it renders on my front end, I take that payment link, that URL, and I use a JS library to generate a QR code with it. And then whenever you scan the QR code and load up that payment link and enter your credit card details. So this is what James saw when he actually made that payment, right? He's using Apple Pay, nice and quick, nice and easy. As soon as that payment is made, that creates a checkout.session.complete event in Stripe. That is then sent to my Amazon EventBridge bus using event destinations. I could use a webhook as well, by the way. But because my account is built on AWS, I use event destinations. I send that event to a Lambda function, and the Lambda function pushes it onto my open WebSocket connection. And that's how my front end is able to react in real time at immense scale. I could have had thousands of orders at the same time. And this AWS um, infrastructure would have handled all of those events and scaled out with all of those WebSocket connections. And we've seen this happen at these live events where you have hundreds of people run to the booth when a talk suddenly ends. We still have some books left at the Swag Store, so please go and try the demonstration. We'll have myself or David or some of the stripes there to walk you through the technology if you're interested, or if you just want to grab a book to take away, now is your chance to do so.